Welcome to Gamer Athletes, coming to you from the end of the world tattoo and cigar bar studio in Northwest Indiana. The Mount Everest of gaming excellence, delivering all the gaming news and info that you as athletes deserve. This is Gamer Athletes. We are your host, Chris Current. Oh, wait. Uh, Dan Martinez is not in the studio today. He is, uh, we had some scheduling conflicts. So I want to put out a solo podcast, and I'm just going to rip through the news. Catch everyone up and keep everybody up to date on uh, what's going on in the gamer world. And, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Um, as always, remember, uh, <coughs> follow us on uh, Instagram, uh, gamer, at Gamer Athletes, Twitter, Gamer Athletes PC, YouTube, Gamer Athletes Podcast. And be sure to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, and we will read them live on the show whenever we get them. So uh, getting into, let's see, some of the fun stuff. Uh, this is an interesting story that I found. Redditor finds out specific uh, or scientific way weight of Link in uh, Tears of the Kingdom. This is kind of cool. We made a scale out of the um, just different items that you can get in uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Put a couple apples on there and found out that Link weighed, I think it was like four apples or ten apples. Yeah, he Link weighs in at a whopping 10 apples. That's a light feller. He's a tiny little guy. Uh, Terraria is, this is Dan's story. So Terraria is so popular, devs can't make any other games. Obviously, uh, there's too many people to play it. They can't update it. And they're going to move right along to retired gamers. Retired gamer hype for Starfield. I'm going to skip this. I'm going to let Dan explain these when he comes back uh, in the future. Uh, this is a big one. There's 170 hours of cutscenes in Baldur's Gate. I mean, come on. That's insane. There's a lot of cutscenes in Baldur's Gate. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 adds the option to turn off motion blur as players complain of effects. The effects was nauseating. I'm surprised they didn't have a motion blur, honestly, uh, to begin with in that. That's pretty common for most games to be able to turn off motion blur as these effects are known. <clears throat> And then I have a story here about the Game Boy that survived the Gulf War is now being retired from the museum. It says, if you were into retro uh, consoles, you no doubt have heard of the Game Boy. The miraculously survived uh, the Gulf War bomb explosion. Well, that hard, hardy handheld is now heading into retirement as it officially left its home at the Nintendo store in New York. Sadly, this means... You will no longer be able to go and witness the battle-worn backpack buddy for yourself. <clears throat> this thing looks pretty uh, beat up and blowed up. So that's uh, some of the fun uh, news stories that are out of the way. Uh, let's get into the news. So Diablo season starts on July 20th. And I've been playing a lot of Diablo. I'm really digging it. I got like a level 75 rogue. Um, and hitting a lot of the end game, a lot of the world bosses have been hitting up those nightmare dungeons. So it says Diablo 4 Season 1 will release July 20th. Blizzard revealed in, in a new live stream. Now, this is actually, uh, since we missed our episode last week, this is uh, actually a couple week old story. This uh, comes from uh, the Xbox Showcase live stream. Uh, this is actually IGN Entertainment Story, and this was released on July 6th. So what is today? Today's the 11th. So uh, at the time of this show, uh, airing of this episode, this, uh, this news story is about a week or so old. Um, and actually, as uh, or two, today is uh, Tuesday, July 11th. Uh, Diablo actually released like a six minute gameplay trailer or a, a trailer for the new season that's upcoming where they showed a little bit of the highlights. So they showed some of the uh, uh, battle pass uh, stuff, some of the uh, some of the uh, upgrades and things you'll be able to get uh, when that season airs. Oh, we should look up how much that I'm not sure how much it's going to cost. You're going to have to pay for it anyway. It is Blizzard, after all, and nothing they do is for free. Let me look this up real quick. Blizzard, or, uh, Diablo for Battle Pass release. Battle Pass. 
has cost. Doing some, uh, I'm going solo here, so it's going to be somewhere around the $10 range for the Battle Pass. And I'm sure they're going to have an upgraded thing where you can buy like 25 levels of extra uh, booster levels or whatever so you can get all your, uh, um, uh, oh, I'm blanking on what it's called, the um, transmog items and things like that uh, that you can get through the battle pass most of the stuff is like transmog uh, just skins basically you can buy that you'll be able to get through leveling up and rewards you will start out at level one and you're going to be outside of the main area so <coughs> they're they're going to have the eternal realm and then they're going to have the season pass areas um in the trailer today uh the season ends uh and it's this is always subject to change, but it says that it ends October 9th. So what you'll have is basically about 12 weeks with a week in between, and then the next season will start. So you have four seasons per year, and there's supposed to be different content. There's supposed to be different bosses. There's supposed to be a lot of new content there that you can enjoy every uh, three months with Diablo. So you have the season pass realms, and you have the eternal realm, which is a regular thing, and you're going to have to level 1 through 50 again in the uh, new realm that they're going to put out. And then I think you'll play as that level in those realms. So whatever level you are, that's what it's going to be. And then you have the eternal realm where you can always go back and <clears throat> fight those world bosses, crank out those nightmare dungeons and uh, level your paragon points through that. See, Halo has lost 98% of its player base. Shocking. Shocker there. Uh, Halo lost me. 100% of me uh, in the first like week it was released. Uh, Dan and I did play quite a bit of that um when it first came out. It was free on the Battle Pass or on the <clears throat> Xbox Game Pass so we were like, you know, fuck it, let's download it, let's try it out. Uh we tried quite a bit of it and um yeah, just there wasn't enough content in there and they're like slowly adding more stuff, but it's just not it's not a game that I want to go back to after the disappointment that it started out with. So, let's see. Street Fighter Six sells two million copies. That's pretty good coming out of Street Fighter Six. Um, let's see what this story has to say. Anything else? This story coming from IGN. <clears throat> Street Fighter Six sales have increased to 2 million units in just over a month, Capcom has announced. So Street Fighter Six got off to a strong start with uh, 1 million sold over launch weekend. Uh, total sales in Street Fighter, Street Fighter franchises now topped 50 million. Capcom said, said single-player features such as the World Tour story mode and the new modern control type. I've seen a lot of people complain about that, but... The new modern control type were designed to appeal to a broad range of players and have contributed to Street Fighter VI's sales success. So one complaint that I heard about is that they, um, <clears throat> new buttons that make it kind of easier to start combos off in the game, and a lot of the old school players didn't necessarily like that because they like to be able to show that there's a skill gap between people who don't play the game and People who do, people who play, put sink massive amounts of hours into learning all the combos or learning a combo or getting to know a character really well. And then they've kind of um, made it a little bit well more accessible, let's say. So, and I've seen a lot of people complain about that. Uh, IGN Street Fighter 6 review returned to 9 out of 10. Uh, we said Street Fighter 6 is the most feature rich of all the Street Fighters. Has the uh, has <clears throat> ever had ever been at launch? Uh, but even beyond that, its roster of eighteen characters is excellent. The new mechanics uh, revitalize the one-on-one -on -one fighting formula, and it absolutely nails all of the little things that make for a stellar fighting game. That's IGN's review. They gave it a nine out of ten. Let's see. <clears throat> Baldur's Gate 3 moves release date to uh, get out of Starfield's way. 
Interesting. And one more interesting story, and I wasn't sure whether to put this in the fuckery section, but I'm going to go over it right now, is they have a bear sex scene in Kotaku. So if you're interested, go out there and look up the bear sex scene on uh, YouTube, and it's not just a bear sex scene, but it is a gay bear sex scene. So they're crossing all their uh, T's and dotting their I's. They got animal sex. They got... Uh, uh, gay relationships, they got everything in this game. If uh, you've played Baldur's Gate 3 in early access, you've probably met uh, Halson, the druid companion who can transform into a bear that you can recruit as a party member. He also has romantic options. And that, uh, so I, I guess if you play a female character, it's not, uh, you can have it any way you want. And transformation comes into play. And I did see, um, I didn't see the video, but I saw some reaction videos of people who did watch the whole cutscene, and they said they have uh, even have jiggle physics on the balls of uh, these, and they're not shy about uh, showing the members in this. So the transformation comes into play when you're getting down and dirty with him. So he changes into a bear mid sex scene, and uh, I guess you get in a, a yeah. A sex, a bear sex romp, huh? So Baldur's Gate 3 has everything. Uh, polyamory, bear fucking, and blood sacrifice. So if that's the kind of thing you're into, and uh, I never played Baldur's Gate 1 or 2, so I am not very familiar with this, uh, um, with that game franchise. All right, game, uh, PlayStation games cost as much as movies, Movie blockbusters make this. This came out of uh, <clears throat> oh, that goes into even uh, bigger news. Uh, the FTC actually lost its battle with uh, over the uh, blocking of the Blizzard Activision uh, by Microsoft. But this goes along with it. Uh, the PlayStation games cost as much, and this somebody found out that uh, even though they have redacted information like how much a game costs, you can still see what it is through a scanner. So I think uh, when they went through, <clears throat> somebody scanned the documents and then a leaker published the pictures of it and it revealed that um, I think it was uh, Horizon Forbidden West what took $212 million to make or 200 no The Last of Us Part 2 cost $220 million to make saying so that those normally closely held figures came to light via a poorly redacted legal filing that part of the FTC lawsuit to block Microsoft bid for Activision. Now, I'm actually kind of glad that the uh, Activision Blizzard takeover is going to go through, at least right now. It seems like uh, Microsoft is winning on it. Um, most because the, a lot of the Blizzard... Um, they kind of. It seems like they 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 put out great games, but they also take their uh, player base for granted a lot of the times. So, I think maybe have a new management. But then again, we've also seen uh, Xbox has kind of faltered uh, over the last couple of releases. So, we'll see what happens if this actually goes through and takes over. Where this is going to head for uh, Activision Blizzard. Um, they said they'll keep Call of Duty on all platforms. So anybody worried about uh, Call of Duty being pulled off of PlayStation Five? I mean, I would be more, more worried about it coming being released with thirty frames per second, or you know, just having a general flop on launch. But you know, they're going to keep all the stuff they promised. They're going to keep, and all this came from uh, one of the big acquisitions that Microsoft had of uh, Bethesda was because they we're going to keep Starfield off of Xbox. So they went, uh, Microsoft went out and said, nah, we're just going to buy out Bethesda. And they did. And now they're keeping Starfield on the Xbox only. That's going to be an Xbox exclusive coming out uh, later, what is it? Uh, September, I think. Um, so <laughs> why this matters developer budgets, which are uh, typical industry secrets are generally said to be skyrocketing for marquee games. And these numbers confirm the trend towards massive Hollywood style spending. And I don't know why they would think, or this isn't even a big shocker. I mean, you look at games like God of War that have, or 
got you know they have the voice acting they have the cinematics they have you know hundreds of people working on these games for four five six seven eight years so i don't even see why this is a shocking thing that, that's even been released it's like i mean i'd be more shocked if it only costs like 10 million dollars to make god of war or, or games, you know, games like that. I mean, two hundred twelve million seems like yeah, pretty. Uh, it seems like right in there. I mean, it's a big game. It's expensive. The graphics are fantastic on it. But um, wow. So, Last of Us Part Two had around two hundred employees working on the game, according to the filing. Sony had previously touted huge sales for both games, 8.4 million for Horizon as of May and 10 million for The Last of Us Part 2. So I said I would think I would be more shocked if I found that the games were a lot less than that. So, um moving on to another, what is this uh PlayStation 5? Yeah, this is a new uh story coming out. So during uh, some of the cutscenes in place in uh, Final Fantasy 16 for the PlayStation 5, uh, it appears that some of the consoles are crashing or overheating. This is a story from Push Square. So Final Fantasy 16 is overheating and crashing PS5 console, consoles completely. While it looks like Square Enix has got some work to do on Final Fantasy 16, the action RPG, which released just over a week ago at the time of writing, it appears that uh, pretty serious crashing issues. Uh, and when we say serious, we mean straight up overheating the PS5 consoles and completely shutting them down. This is according to multiple users across Reddit and Twitter. And they all have, uh, they all tell the exact same story. Final Fantasy 16 is crashing PS5s at a very specific point in the game, but only when the graphics mode, so only when the graphics mode is utilized. So when it's at its top highest quality, does this happen? So if you do it on performance mode, which is generally what um, I think a lot of people go because they would rather have uh, higher frame rates uh, and a decent graphical experience as opposed to the most optimized graphics with a shitty frame rate. But I mean, that's just what uh, my experience is with uh, most of the people that I talk to to play games uh, for context. Graphic mode pushes resolution, but caps a frame rate at 30 frames per second. So there you go. Since we have never encountered this issue and because we haven't seen, seen more people talk about it, it is fair to assume that most people are using the game performance mode which outside of some uh, frame uh, rate dips doesn't have any major problems. So it doesn't seem like a lot of PlayStations are overheating, but um, be aware and, you know, if you want to safeguard your equipment, run it in performance mode. Especially, uh, uh, you know, if you're <laughs> trying to run your video games on 8K, I mean, it's been you can't really tell much of a difference between like 1440 and, uh, and 4k too much. Anyway, I actually run a computer monitor on my, uh, Xbox and PlayStation and I run it at 1440 and I always run in performance mode and it works out. I mean, everything looks good. So there's, uh, this is coming up on the horizon. Supposedly, um, red dead redemption remake is in the talks. This is uh, from comicbooks.com. Uh, yeah, comicbook.com. Red Dead Redemption remake gets new update from the Insider. From Insider. It seems like Rockstar Games is very aware that fans want a new version of Red Dead Redemption. I guess I'd like to know what um, everybody out there, what the top of their remake. Mine is Bloodborne. Probably a Bloodborne uh, remake, remaster, brought it forward into the next generation with uh, um, updated graphics and 30 frames per second. That game is amazing, and it for for its time it looked fantastic, but it's choppy. 
when you're playing it. So I'd love to see a 30 frames per second brought up that one. And a lot of people complain that it hasn't ever been brought to PC. There are two games uh, in the Dark Souls, in the Souls like from uh, from software. Uh, Bloodborne is one of them, and Demon Souls is the other one that have never been ported to PC. So it would be cool to see those. But uh, getting on to this, uh, Red Dead Redemption is widely regarded as one of the best games of the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 era. It is incredibly impressive and kickstarted other major and new franchises from Rockstar Games to build upon alongside the iconic Grand Theft Auto series. With that said, Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption is a classic and its sequel builds off a lot of the very strong ideas that, games, that gives the game the incredible levels of depth. A lot of fans had hoped to see a Red Dead Redemption remake or remaster, possibly using the bones of the sequel as a foundation for a new and improved version of the game. <coughs> see, rumors of a remake re- slash remaster have been swirling for years. But it was reported that uh, production on one was shelled following a lackluster uh, reception of the GTA trilogy and Rockstar's desire to focus on Grand Theft Auto 6. With that said, things may have changed once again. A recent listing from Korea Ratings Board, and um, the Korea Ratings Board uh, is a pretty good barometer on when games will be released and what's being worked on because they generally get um, need approval for their ratings early. So it was because of the Korea ratings board that we had, uh, let's see, the Elden Ring was, uh, got a projected release date. Um, I think, I'm trying to think, there was another big uh, name title. Maybe, maybe it was Final Fantasy 16. I can't remember. And I know uh, later on this year, because I'm a big uh, From Software uh, fan, uh, the Armored Core game. Also, the the rumor mill started about the potential release date, and those were pretty spot on based on uh, the Korean rating board. So um, the Korean ratings board noted that what seems to be a new version of Red Dead Redemption was in the works especially as it had a different description from its original game rating with the newest one mentioning things like more detail, level of violence, and gore. Does this mean it's happening? Um, I'm not sure, but, you know, generally you start seeing a little bit of rumors here, a little bit of rumors there. You start, you know maybe companies put out these rumors, start feeling a little bit of the hype or whatever. And then they're like, all right, there's a little bit of hype behind it. Let's go on ahead and, uh, let's, uh, you know, green light this one. Let's go through. But rockstar did announce, uh, and release the GTA trilogy in about a month. So it's possible something similar could happen as we get a very quick announcement and and we get a very quick announcement and immediate release. (laughs) So for all Red Dem- Redemption uh, fans out there, um, you know, keep your fingers crossed. We might get something to come out of it. This is the big news. This is what I'm gonna, eh, I'm gonna miss Dan not being here on. But uh, Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk are planning a battle royale, the tale of the tech tape. So I'm guessing. Um, So this fight is going to be held in Las Vegas. Uh, the feud emerged when Musk 51 tweeted his enthusiasm for a Las Vegas held MMA style cage match between him and the Zuck, who is now 39. So Musk is 51. Uh, Zuckerberg is 39. And if anybody's been paying attention, Mark Zuckerberg has been training pretty hard at the BJJ. So old Musk might have a little bit of, but then again, uh, Elon Musk, I seen his uh, training with George St. Pierre He's got himself on a regiment. And uh, let's see, the latter remind, uh, replied to Musk's challenge in a seemingly positive manner, written on, a, on the Facebook owner's Instagram, send me a location. 
Wow. Let's see. <clears throat> the internet reacted appropriately to the news, giving that seemingly childish feud is between two computer geeks who are worth more than $300 billion put together. Many people online also noted that the fight would likely be one-sided given Zuckerberg's knowledge of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Uh, whether the pair will actually get into the ring it remains to be seen, but I think they have... They're both training right now. Let's see, why are they feuding? It's just for the from the cage match challenge. And maybe um Elon Musk needs to get some news out there about something other than uh let's see SpaceX and uh Twitter. Oh, the rivalry goes back even further. While the cage match puts the pair in the spotlight, the feud between Musk and Zuckerberg is not a new one. The animosity between the two seemed to date back to 2016 when one of Musk's SpaceX rockets exploded while carrying a contracted Facebook satellite. Ooh. After the incident, Zuckerberg wrote that he was deeply disappointed in the explosion, notably calling Musk's launch a failure. It wasn't a success, so he wasn't lying. So wow, this this has been boiling up for a little while here. Since then, the insider noted that the pair had been grabbing with each other behind closed doors for years. Though they have also expressed their anger publicly, just a year after SpaceX explosion, the pair got into another anger match into another anger match. That's weird. It's weird wording here. This time over the use of artificial intelligence during space books or during space books, during Facebook's live session, a drone noted that Zuckerberg said of AI people who are naysayers and try to dumb to drum up these doomsayer scenarios. I just don't understand it. Uh, it's really negative, and in some ways, it actually, I actually think it, think it's pretty irresponsible. So they're fighting over uh, exploding rockets and artificial intelligence and just normal shit talking on the internet. That's how they should settle all things. Just put two people in a match. Next time you see a, a Twitter argument between two dummies fighting over whether they like their broccoli steamed or with butter and uh, uh, cheese on it. They should just take them, put them, you know, put them in a ring and just let them go at it. And then we can have the ultimate say on what is the better form of broccoli. And then I'll still argue. Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk Italian government offer. Ooh, fight like, oh, this is this is good if this were to happen, actually. This is from TMZ Sports, this news article that has uh Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, Italian government offer fight like true gladiators at the Coliseum. I don't even know if this is true, but I know TMZ is a pretty uh, reputable news outlet. They've never gotten anything wrong. The Ministry of Culture office issued a statement saying, uh, quote, there has been no formal contract from the ministry, nor any written documents, even if the news appears tasty, uh, appears uh, tasty, it is unfounded. So I guess that um, they're reporting that this is not true. Uh, the ministry first reached out to Mark Zuckerberg. Then the request was from forwarded to Dana White. And there was a follow-up and a call was set for the next week. The ministry added if Zuckerberg and Musk wanted to perform in the Coliseum, that they would have to make a nonviolent challenge. Our sources are scoffing at this, saying the ministry reached out because of the fight challenge. That's why uh, Elon mentioned the Coliseum in a tweet last night. So maybe Elon went out and tweeted about this, and then uh, this will blow your mind. The officials from the government of Italy contracted Mark Zuck- contacted Mark Zuckerberg about staging a UFC fight against Elon Musk at the most legendary battleground in the world, the Roman Coliseum. TMZ Sports has learned. That would be actually kind of cool. I might, eh, I don't know if I'd pay for it, but 
Ooh, here's the tale of the tape for these guys. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, 39 years old. Elon Musk, 51. Mark Zuckerberg uh, comes in at a height of five foot and seven inches. And Elon Musk at six foot two inches. Mark Zuckerberg weighs in at 145. And Elon is at 230. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg's uh, background is Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And uh, Elon Musk has karate, taekwondo, and judo. Interesting. I wonder how well versed he is in any of those. That would be um not sure how interesting of a fight that would be. But I mean if they train hard for it, I mean I've seen a lot of influencers out there or things like that. They do these charity matches and they go out there and they really train hard for these and uh they're thrown on the uh lightest one was uh Lana Pierce and um what was her name? Mika so that uh, that one turned out all right. Uh, they went out and trained really hard for it, and uh, they put on what seemed to be a good fight. So this is a this is a big story and should scare um, some people. Amazon shuts down customer smart home devices after delivery driver false racist claims. So um, this person wasn't home, and the Amazon driver. Uh, rang the doorbell or maybe um, walked up. Okay, maybe he walked up and the doorbell said, um, can I, something like, can I help you? But it was just an automated response from the doorbell. Yeah, it says, excuse me, can I help you? Was what the doorbell said. It was a Eufy doorbell and had issued an automated response. Uh, the driver who's walking away wearing headphones must have misinterpreted the message uh, nonetheless. But the following day, my Amazon account was locked and my Echo devices were logged out of. So this guy, so basically what happened, somebody made a report of something that they may have heard. His accounts were locked. This guy then went through and made an appeal took all the video evidence of what he had at his house between his Eufy devices and whatever, proving that he didn't make a, um, or that his, his doorbell didn't make a racist response. And then he had to go through an appeal process. And it says, despite this, um, let's see, uh, this gentleman's name was, let's see, Brandon, Brandon Jackson uh, was this gentleman's name. Um, Jackson insisted he uh, supported Amazon taking extra precautions to protect uh, de- uh, delivery drivers by questioning why he had been locked out of his account. Anyway, despite dis- uh, promptly submitting video evidence immediately upon learning of the issue, my account remained locked, he said. Despite numerous calls and emails, the homeowner said his account wasn't reinstalled until uh, May 31st. So let's see, the occurring uh, incident was on May 25th. So his, his thing was blocked less than 24 hours after the delivery was dropped off. So... I mean, this is a problem if you have your entire house like controlled by these devices that you can have a third party outside of the... I mean, you shouldn't have the government doing this kind of shit either. But you have all your money set up through... or You know, and I have uh, smart stuff in my house. My lights, I have a few lights. I have uh, most of the music that I play in the house is through them. It would be kind of shitty to be locked out of being able to turn on and being... Like, it wouldn't take me long to fix the solution, but still having another party and then you having to appeal to Amazon over this and then having to go through this corporate bureaucracy to try to get your shit unlocked. Uh, and I mean, it's, it's just, it's mind boggling to me. I mean, I don't want to endorse any, uh, you know, racist behavior or whatever, but I think it's uh, on Amazon to do a better job of reviewing this guy's stuff. I mean, they basically said that this guy's Yuffie was guilty before even seeing any evidence. So, I mean, 
they should probably uh, have better due diligence with um, them going out and collecting this information before making arbitrary decisions, or even at that, just have a quicker fucking response. I mean, this was like uh, six days this guy is locked out of like his stuff, and I'm not sure to what degree um, he had smart devices in his house, but I said just for myself, it would be a giant inconvenience. On top of that, you're sending emails, you're providing them with video evidence that more than should have cleared it up, and a decision should have been made uh, much faster. I mean, this guy had his stuff gone for six days. He was unable to access any of the stuff in his house. So, and then on top of that, <clears throat> there was a, a Lewis uh, Rossman, a uh, pretty large YouTube streamer, went and covered this. And um, despite being, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see how many YouTube uh, followers this guy got, this fella got. So he has 1.83 million subscribers. So he went out and just reported on this story. And he's had a YouTube partner program for a long time. And he's never had any problems with it. I think he said he had it for like eight years. So he, but he went and he reported negatively on this story about them shutting this guy's house down over false racism claims. So he, he goes and reports on this on his YouTube channel. And then he has his partnership that he's had for eight years or something and never had a bad a strike with was taken away from him. And it wasn't, and he said that he was only making a, you know, maybe a couple hundred bucks from this partner program. It's where, you know, uh, you get in a partner program with YouTube or whatever, and then somebody goes and watches your video, and then you want to know what equipment he was using, and he has links down below that take you to his Amazon. You use those links. He gets a couple of bucks from that purchase if you decide to purchase your thing. So despite having no problems with Amazon in um, in the past, Lewis Rossman, because he reported negatively on this, had his partnership uh, program removed. So you can go check out his videos. Uh, he actually does pretty good content. That's where I first heard about the Amazon shutting down the customer smart device uh, was through his uh, YouTube channel, actually. And I was shocked to learn that uh, Amazon goes out and uh, uses their partnership program as a, as a, a punitive, um, you know, a, a punitive, um, God, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know, retribution against him for showing their, uh, showing Amazon in a bad light. So I guess uh, don't show Amazon in a bad light if you want to be able to access your smartphone or any of that shit. So there you go. Prime Energy is under investigation. Or they're not under investigation yet. Uh, Chuck Schumer asked the FC, FDA to look into Prime. Logan Paul's high caffeine energy drink. Now I looked up some of the, the, the caffeine information. on it. They, Prime Energy only has... 200 milligrams of caffeine, which is right there along uh, on par with monster uh, monster. And I think ghost also has 200 milligrams of caffeine, but I guess uh, since it's mostly targeted towards children, they just want to hear, they want an investigation about it. Who is the mainstream target of prime? It's the kids under 18. Schumer said Sunday. <sighs> I, you know, it's, I, I don't think Logan Paul uh, make. There's just the the face of it. It's not like they make it themselves. And this is Prime Energy. This isn't their Prime, uh, their competitor like Gatorade or whatever. Let's say their Prime Sports Drink and then Prime Energy. Prime Energy is a fairly is a little bit newer than uh, the Sports Drink. So, but in a 12 ounce can of Prime Energy contains 200 milli. I guess that is that's about the same as like um uh, I think Bang. Bang, Rain, and G Fuel are right around 300 milligrams, but that's for 16 ounces. So if this is 200 milligrams, for that's right on par with those. And I'm not sure <clears throat> which is the equivalent about of a half dozen Diet Cokes or half dozen Coke cans or nearly two Red Bulls. So I guess what is a uh, – says nearly two Red Bulls, so they probably got about 150 for 12 ounces of Red Bull. Not quite sure. I haven't drank a Red Bull. I think they taste like 
shit. But uh, the our lawmakers who are uh, still haven't fixed the water in Flint, Michigan, are concerned about the children. I mean, will everybody think about the children? But I got to drive over potholes. Why don't we solve solve the fucking potholes? And, uh, you know, the water in Flint, Michigan, or the water in some of these other uh, states and cities that have lead pipes that uh, are, are deteriorating. Let's solve those problems first before we worry about the the Red Bulls or the, the Red Bull competitors, let's say. <clears throat> anyway, that's uh, uh, Logan Paul is under investigation now for his prime energy drink. And uh, this is good for this next story is about Twitch. This is good for Twitch. At least in my opinion. I haven't, I haven't really looked into it too much, but I know they're going to start doing shorts like TikTok and YouTube for to help you discover new content creators. Twitch uh, has always been known as a live only platform, but not anymore. A long standing live streaming site will introduce short form and more discoverable for offline content to help streamers reach their audience without needing to be live. This is a good W for. For Twitch doing this, because one of the big gripes is that basically they have a 1% issue or that if you're not in the top 1% of streamers, you know, and even getting in the top 1%, you don't have to even have a whole shit ton of fault or uh, people watching you or subscribers, but you have, and but that 1% number is like dragged really high by big streamers like XQC um, you have Asmund Gold out there, uh, Hassan, uh, Hassan Piker. You have, you have guys like these dragon. Your number's like way high, but you're 1%. There isn't a huge subscriber threshold uh, for it. I've looked into this before. I'm not sure 100%. I can't remember what the numbers are off the top of my head, but you don't have to be a massive streamer to hit that. But if you're outside of that 1%, or maybe one to five percent or whatever. If you're outside of that one, you will almost never be seen on Twitch, and it's hard to build a following if you. And it's hard to discover people. Like you have to go. Like I actually uh, follow a guy who doesn't have. He he doesn't have a huge following on Twitch, but he's been kind of stagnant at this. You know, he'll have like thirty, forty viewers, and he's been. St- kind of stuck there for a while and maybe that some of that's part of his content or whatever but he's also not being thrown out and if you're if you watch a lot of like uh, the souls no hit community guys it's not a huge community even that's like the one percent you got the Hobbs of the world or you have the uh uh dino or you know you have like these guys that are there they're your one percent uh distortion these are your one percent speed run no hit community guys who take up most of the viewers and even though there's some great gamer athletes out there for lack of a better term um it's hard for these guys to get discovered which begs the question what should twitch do about this what should youtube do what should and do they have an obligation to do something i think um it would help their platform as a whole if they draw more people in to watching it because a a lot of people like the smaller creators that are that you can actually interact with them when you get to those large numbers those guys are entertaining and whatnot but they don't have as much interaction with their audience when you're in a in a guy who has three four hundred people watching him you can make a comment and it's seen and they might respond to it a lot better than someone who has 60,000 people and their chats just going a million miles an hour. You know, when you have, when you're talking to somebody who, and you can go to different and you see, like I've been in some of these smaller souls, like uh, no hit run communities where you can 
you recognize the same people in this chat or that chat or this chat or whatever, but it's hard for you to discover other people that are providing that same type of content. You have to really search for it. And then you have to scroll down and to the, to the bottom of, of the Twitch thing. And you have to look for people that are specifically no hit running or speed running or giving you that type of content. And so this is a good way for Twitch to, uh, really express or, or give a, a, a stepping a, a step ladder for those smaller content creators which is good good for twitch so we'll see how this pans out in the future let's see um and that's that's pretty much all i'm going to do for this episode of gamer athletes uh i said um Apologize for missing the episode last week. Uh, Dan, like I said, uh, Dan and I have had some scheduling difficulties the last couple of weeks, so <clears throat> maybe I'll uh, just get some chat AI bots and they can sit back here and talk back and forth, and then we can end up putting an episode out every day. Um, but <clears throat> all right, but that's been uh, – remember, uh, follow us on Instagram, Gamer.Athletes, Twitter, GamerAthletesPC, YouTube, Gamer Athletes Podcast. And the Discord server at Gamer Athletes. Um, thank you everyone for listening and for supporting. This has been another uh, episode of Gamer Athletes. We'll see you on the next show. Hopefully, Dan will be back later, everybody. Sorry.